Hello. Welcome to my review of the 2025 Leaving Cert, Ma Leaving Cert Mathematics paper. I can't even speak. So this is freshly on the website. As I'm talking, I was literally refreshing the website a bunch of times in order to get the paper up. I have read through it, so it's not necessarily a first look. I'm just going to be commenting on the questions that came up. So... You know, I've had experience doing all the maths papers pretty much all the way as far back as 2012, so I feel like I know what I'm talking about when it comes to what comes on the paper and what doesn't. So, in fairness, we were expecting a paper that was sort of middle of the road. We weren't expecting it to be overly difficult like 2023's, but not so easy like 2024's was. So, question one is always typically algebra-based, so here we had modular inequality, which is very nice, and then uh, simple enough expanding. So just be careful when you're distributing all the powers. And then part C was a very standard uh, factor here in question. It already gave you one of the factors, and you just have to find the solutions, so using the factor there and there. So very standard first question. Now second question, again, fairly standard derivative here and equation of a tangent that is stuff you should have done time a plenty so here they gave you a very nice value to work with because you're dealing with uh, something that's going to be linear as well as a trig function so again not too bad of a question and then we have this question where um it's a bit of a awkward looking functions question at first until you actually go ahead and do it then it's actually not too bad here i think uh, g of 3 you get 1 and g of 1 you can kind of only really estimate. Uh, well actually in fairness you can use the equation of a line here but in, like at the first guess it might think you need to estimate it but you have to then use an, a line equation here and then understanding what the inverse function does to something so that's reflecting uh, 90 degrees or reflected through the line y equals x, so something different. Now, question three, again, two more derivatives. So here we have a, a pretty bog standard chain rule. And then here, depending on what kind of person you are, it's another chain rule or equation rule question. And then we have to show that it has no local maximum or local minimum points. So just essentially proving that this can never be zero. Okay, and then straight into integration. So they haven't actually done this in a while where they put the bounds as a variable and you have to look for a result. Although in fairness, please put a space between your integral and dx because it just looks very clunky there. But other than that, that's okay. Question four. We were expecting a de Moivre-Sim to come up and it came up in finding an angle in terms of sines and cosines. So again, you effectively just do expand the set as normal and then equate the real side because we're talking about the cosine function. So not too shabby there. And then another Dewaris there, I mean, just trying to find the roots of some equation. So I would think that's a very, very straightforward complex numbers question. It wasn't as involved as the previous two years. So one that students should be relatively okay with. Question five, completing the square. Again, we hadn't seen this in a while. So we were kind of expecting this to come up. And then a laws of logs question. So again, all of this is appearing very standard so far, especially for the short questions. It's all okay. And then we had a very interesting uh, simultaneous equations question where we actually had three variables, but this bit of information is key. And I've actually done out this question on a separate bit of paper when I was looking through it. I decided to have a go at this one, and it's actually pretty intriguing. It's a very nice little question. Now, question six, we were expecting a binomial expansion. It hasn't come up in bloody ages from last I checked. So, yeah, nice to, to give it in there. Although, I feel like them giving this hint is a bit much, because I think the phrase, in descending powers of p, is explanatory enough. I don't think this is entirely necessary, but you do you, I guess. And then we have another kind of quadratics here. Uh, you effectively use the discriminant because we're talking about the nature of uh, these solutions. So overall, I would think people who 
practiced a lot of this sh these short questions, the, these section A's, felt that, you know, this is a decent enough section. Okay, definitely, you know, a lot harder than the equivalent of section A last year. But I don't think it's too difficult to make it unmanageable. So this is what an exam paper should be. You know, it, it'll appear difficult, but when you actually go ahead and crunch the numbers, it's not actually too bad. And any semi-competent student is going to get pretty good marks in this section. So I'm, I'm overall very happy. Now, question seven kind of gave me a bit of a scare because, I mean, just look at it. There's random geometric shapes everywhere, but you don't really actually have to do this. So they give you a lot of information, but it's all okay because you can pretty much reverse the logic by reading the question. So you can see that these split, uh, well, there's 22 in a difference between them, and then there's another difference between them there, and they form an arithmetic sequence. And then talking about a sum of an arithmetic sequence, and then just a standard kind of follow-up question with regards to a sum, that will lead you to form a quadratic. Okay, and then part B, very nice little diagram. So um, any sort of spiral shapes I, I do quite like. And this is again, it talks about a geometric series. So in fact, all you really need are these two values. You don't actually need the diagram at all to help you here. It's just trying to get you with uh, this weird nomenclature of orbitals and laps or whatever. But it's a very interesting sequences question. But again, as is common as you'll see in this paper, if you look at it initially without reading the words, you think, God, I can't do that question. It looks too complicated. But when you sit down and start to digest a lot of the information in the question, it's actually not too bad. So I think if you're able to read and synthesize the information, this question should have been pretty nice for you. Okay, question eight, financial maths type stuff. Now, weirdly enough, currency exchange hasn't appeared as often as it should. And then there's also this little extra bit at the end. That was a bit difficult. But yeah, I mean, more currency exchange should come up because, well, people are starting to travel more, so it's a nice skill to at least have. I know it's not in the junior search, but a lot of stuff in the junior search people forget. So it's nice that they're incorporating that here. And then we have this question. Now I find this really funny because one of the mock papers that I made and gave to a few of uh, the students that I tutor had a question nearly exactly like this. And, well, not like that, but like this, where you kayak and then you run. But in my case, it was the other way around. It was they, they ran and then they swam to their house or something. So the people that I tutored pretty much got a question exactly like this, and it was answered pretty well. So hopefully they re remember that question and apply the same logic to here. Now, what is annoying about this kind of question is you get some fairly awkward uh, derivative and then a, a much more awkward uh, equation to solve for the minimum value. But again, similar enough to all the previous years, they're including a lot of this kind of graph work. So this particular reminds me of 2023's paper with uh, I forget who it was driving down the motorway or something and you have to compare their motion to one of these graphs so it's actually not too terrible it's a question that the students would have done before and should hopefully have been okay with okay I mean that, that's the end of question 8 I think it's a very nice mix and well definitely quite approachable it's just a lot of annoying algebra and derivatives to handle Okay, question nine, fuel consumption function, find a derivative, that's all good. Part of the journey speed is that, uh, find dfdc when t is seven, and then the rate of change dc dt. Here you just effectively use the related rates because you have a dfdc, and well, you're looking for a dc dt, so you're gonna find something else. Um, Note, because I'm misreading things, it's actually just from here. So that's entirely my fault, I'm misreading things. But then I remember this. Now I could be wrong, but I don't remember there being piecewise defined functions here. So students might have got a bit of a scare when, when they read this, but it's effectively, it's this function 
for that range and this function for that range. So it's not too bad of a concept to try to digest for the first time. It's just not in any of the textbooks as far as I know. So yeah, drawing a graph, that's fine. And then ease integration uh, to find the average speed. Okay, that's fine. So, I mean, other than the, the weird little piecewise thing, I think that's also a question that students should have been okay with. Again, it's quite calculus heavy, as is paper one naturally. But yeah, I think it's it's relatively okay if, if you've pretty much done your work on derivatives and integrals. And then question 10, this is another question where it's essentially like just a pure logic question. So part A, you don't need to know any maths other than all the points are some unit distance away and have uh, unit coordinates. And then this is a bit of a fairly okay follow on question. You just have to spot the pattern that these are actually just the edge points. So that should be okay. Small value event for which the four four is a pattern. Yeah, I mean, uh, you do have to do a little bit of thinking there. And then, again, this is another question where it looks pretty scary, but they pretty much give you a helping hand at the start. And then this is a fairly easy expansion. And then limit of a quotient. Again, stuff that you guys should have done before. Now, what I kind of wasn't expecting here is proof by induction to be part of the long question section. Usually induction, as we all know, as we should know, is usually part of the short question section. So you're usually given a statement to prove such and such by induction. But here, it's induction with something that, that's quite visual, which I think it's one that might suit other people better than others. I just can't you know, I'm not an entirely great visualizer, so I'd find this question rather challenging. But then there's this little thing to talk about as well. So I'd, I'd imagine if, if I sat down, if I was in the stress of the exam, I could probably try bash this out. But I'd, I'd probably find it quite challenging. That's honestly just me. So overall, I think it was a great mix of fairly straightforward questions and questions which got you to think quite critically of the maths that you were using. So I think any competent student who has done well in previous exam papers would find this a great challenge in a good sense, they would think. In comparison to 2024's paper being so easy, this is definitely uh, a good sandwich filling between the paper ones for 2023 and 2024. So yeah, in fairness, I gave the tuition centers fours out of tens. I would give this closer to an eight. I would think this is quite a good exam for all students. And there's definitely sections which, uh, for example, here, uh, the part D section, that definitely follow a Bloom's taxonomy type thing where they give you a nice straightforward question to ease you in, something that's slightly annoying, and then effectively the end result of that will give you the information here for whatever QN was, the proportion of uh, points of integer coordinates where uh, A and B are less than, uh, you know, the, the nth power. So yeah, as I said, 8 out of 10 exam definitely hit all corners of what a good exam should be. And hopefully a lot of other people find it the same. And I wish you all best of luck studying for paper two on Monday morning.